gespeichert. Okay, she has disappeared. All right, um, okay, but before we jump into the session, a um, few ground rules. Um, if everyone can just mute yourselves throughout the session. Um, but if you have any questions, um, please just ask your questions straight away. Um, you can use the chat box or you can just ask, just like stop me and ask the question. Um, if not, write down your question and then ask me later. It's up to you. But if you have a question, please ask. Um, we are going to keep this as interactive as possible. So I want you guys to participate and to give me examples or tell me things. Um, or like share the information. I'm not an expert in this. I am just another person in the long chain of things that are going on. Um, so yeah, do feel free to chip in whenever you feel like it. Uh, and you'll be playing a really fun game at the end, which possibly will have a prize. Uh, do we have prizes, Sarah? <laughs> I can mail people stickers. Woohoo! Stickers, all right. Winners get stickers. Okay. Um, so let's just get into it then. All right, I'm going to close this little thumbnail thingy. So today we're going to be talking about nonviolent direct action. Okay, so what is it? What is nonviolent direct action? So nonviolent direct action, or NVDA for short, is basically what the word says. It's nonviolent, meaning they're not aggressive. Every time an action is performed in this manner, uh, under the banner of NVDA, we consider this to be, we are not being aggressive, we are being passive, we may stop workflow, we may stop uh, things from happening normally, but we do not harm anyone, we do not cause physical property damage, those are called riots, a <laughs> very big difference. Um, Similar messaging sometimes, but very big difference what a riot and NVDA is. Um, NVDA, again, just remember non-aggressive. And um, you may ask me, what's the difference between direct action and indirect action? Um, the difference is quite straightforward. Um, direct action means you are taking direct change. You're doing something right now. Indirect action is more of a process. It's more of a domino effect like if you want to for example here in Malaysia um, for the past year 2017 we've had no plastic in the state of Selangor but this took seven years of work seven years of indirect action of uh, protesting lobbying of uh, working through government bills pushing things forward those are very direct and indirect in a very different way okay direct action is where you are taking a direct stand. So these can be things that happen like uh, sit-ins, um, strikes, uh, things that get news attention, things that get actions done immediately, uh, things that happen um, now. Okay. Um, oh God. What did I do? Okay. So um, I, I will show you guys some pictures of uh, different actions and things like this at the end. Um, but here is an example of like uh, an indirect action. This is something which is done by a local NGO. So they did like a whole tree planting thing and they uh, went ahead and pushed uh, a few things towards the government and um, it indirectly based, uh, tried to fix this area here, this um, beach side which used to be filled with mangroves but is now destroyed. Um, and that's what I mean by, by indirect, okay? Direct action, however, could be, for example, people staging a protest in this, these areas. For example, um, this is a blockade action that was done um, about a year ago as well. Um, this blockade basically was set up. Uh, do I have more pictures? Yeah, so this is a blockade that we set up um, right there. Um, where the trees were being taken out of the forest illegally. So there was illegal logging going on in indigenous lands. And basically they built a blockade straight away. 
and that stopped the logging from coming in and out. So that was a direct action, and they did non-violent. They did it non-violently because they didn't um, cause harm to anyone. All they did was block a, a, a pathway so that the loggers couldn't come in and out, and that was a tedious thing. It makes things. Um, makes people realize like the unjust power dynamic, which is what I wanted to say, because using methods of protests or non-cooperation or interventions in such, um, it's the whole idea of basically changing and uh, how people look at the current situation. For Like in Malaysia, before this whole blockade issue, this logging was going on for years. And um, after people actually took a stand, um, by erecting these blockades and things, it actually made a difference. Like they now, this whole area is now protected um, and there's no more illegal logging going on uh, in that whole area. And these were all things that we did. We went to the police station um, to lodge reports against uh, the loggers and things like this. We pulled up blockades. This is a very long and thought out procedure. So that's a whole different end towards direct and indirect action. Um, is everyone clear on this? Am I talking too fast? Is everyone all right? Yes? No. No? We are understanding it clearly. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, last but not least is, is it legal? Okay. So this is a very interesting question, which depends on the country. Um, for example, in Malaysia, you can hold protests and you can hold um, uh, demonstrations and things like this if they follow a certain restraint, like they have certain words you can't say, certain things you can't do. However, holding a blockade in the middle of the forest, um, that was legal. Like if you noticed here, this was all, these are all indigenous people. Um, the only people who are not Part of the indigenous community was this lady here, myself, uh, and this chap over here. All the others involved in here and everything, they are all indigenous people. And because they are indigenous people, it is legal for them to erect this blockade. And that's why um, when this was carried forward, I will share this with you guys later at the end. Um, when this was carried forward, we actually won this in a court case. Uh, so. Yeah, that's how we managed to protect the, the, the land and everything like that. Um, but it was illegal for me to be there in these areas because um, I'm not an indigenous person and in Malaysia to go into these forests, you need a permit to go in and things like that. Um, so they were suspending the permits at the time. So it was illegal for me to be there at the time. Um, so that's why there are different laws and regulations. For example, in America or like, let's, I would rather use a country like France. Um, it, France is a socialist country, so their right to come together or things like this is very, I would say, free. They, they have a lot of rights in this sense. Uh, but because now it is under military rule because of uh, the attacks that happened a few years ago, um, they can't come together in the streets at all. If there are more than five people at a time in uh, Paris, uh, police have a right to actually come and detain you. And so that's why it's very different in different countries, but there are a lot of ingenious ways to go around this. Um, I'll go through some of them in a while. Uh, but I just want to show you guys this little video before we go into a little exercise I have for you guys, okay? Um, but before that, is anyone unclear about what non-violent direct action is or what action is anyone does anyone have any questions for now okay if not i'm gonna play this really cool video um i don't know if you guys have no you can yeah okay so here we go
All right. Cool video, you know. So that was just like some of the yeah, few, next one. That was like some of the few things that was done. Um like some of the different actions that we did throughout Paris. And then at the end of the day, we also converged in the final end and we did something really massive and big. And that was just really amazing. There were so many different actions that were going on during that time. Um, like, let me show you some of the things that were done in Bonn recently. So everyone can still see my screen, yeah? So this was one of the workshops that we did um for people in uh, the art space who came to the art space in uh, germany recently for cop 23 this was during the conference of youth so we had a workshop for people to cut about different types of actions what can you do um this was what one of the things we did we made a huge banner um myself and kevin and um, we used this banner through a march. There was a huge march that was going on um, during that time. So this is something that was made in the art space as well. Like some of the things that we taught people how to do was like stenciling, painting, things like this. And it's a, it was a huge march. There was about 25,000 people that came and this is right before COP. So this is one form of action where you come together as a large group, you rally together with a cause, um, you make, people look at you and the messaging which you have point things out um this is the art space also another thing which we did for an action where they handed uh out like people come to like chop down the amazon and things like that um all the different things that we did in the art space um these were used for uh street theater we made giant puppets uh one of the goddess kali and one a corporate um, a corporate scumbag and then we had this huge like dance battle fight thing which we did along the streets um, where like the goddess Kali was like shouting I'm here to save you uh, we can stop climate change I've seen yeah and like the corporate guys like oh no we want fossil fuels and then they suddenly start fighting um, this is another thing which is used for protest um, they basically like went into uh, an American um, event, which was about fossil fuels at COP23, which is a really ridiculous thing. You're having a fossil fuel event at a um, climate change conference. So they went into that conference and they all had these different banners and these things like this. And they asked the American delegation to the conference, what are you still in here for? They marched out. Um, they had a song and dance and they had a big speech thing that they did. Um, this is another banner that was made. This is something that was made by Sarah. Step Up 2018. They did an action where it was... Uh... Sarah, do you want to share about your action, Sarah? What did you guys do with this huge banner? Sure, but just so you know, on my screen, I'm, not, I'm still seeing that this is just the beginning. Huh? Oh. Yeah, is is everyone else seeing that? Oh, oh no no I think you guys sorry, are you seeing it now? Uh no, it's still the same. Oh okay. Can you see this now? Uh, well I'm still looking at the uh, the last slide. Then this is just beginning thing. 
Okay, one second. I think I've got something wrong here. Okay. Um, okay, can you see this now? This huge banner? Yes. Yeah. Guess is, is dirty. Okay, so you guys didn't understand what I was just saying just now then. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, but this is the workshop I was saying, which we did in the art space. Uh, this is a giant banner we made for a huge march, which had 25,000 people um, that attended uh, this march. It was right before the conference of parties. Um, this is the art space I was mentioning and the different action. Uh, these are the giant puppets. I'll show you more on the puppets later. And this is the thing I was saying that the Americans were holding for their action for walking out on a, uh, they walked out on a session which was held by the American delegation about foss uh, fossil fuels. Um, this is Sarah's banner which says Step Up 2018. Uh, Sarah, do you want to share about that? What that action you guys did? Sure. So in 2018, the uh, Paris Agreement uh, will, st uh, or the body that uh, talks about the Paris Agreement, will start working on uh, the first global stock take and finding out what we've done, what we've done so far to reduce emissions. And the um, the UN um, Environmental um, Program, I believe, just released. Um, a report saying what the emissions gap is, or essentially what's the difference between how much of uh, fossil fuel emissions or carbon uh, or greenhouse gas emissions we need to reduce to reach the goals of the Paris Agreement for um, well below 2.5 degrees of average global temperature rise, and what we're actually committed to doing through the nationally determined contributions to the Paris Agreement. So we have what countries have said that they're going to do, and then what the globe, uh, global community has agreed to achieving, and there's a big difference between there. And so we've only covered about two thirds of the emissions that we need to get rid of. And so that extra third, we're asking countries to step up by 2018 or during 2018 to strengthen their uh, agreement, their contributions to the Paris Agreement so that it can be a much stronger um, agreement that actually meets its goals. Because right now it's not going to meet its goals. We're going to far overshoot the, uh, the 2.0 uh, degrees Celsius limit. I think we're ahead for like 3.0 six or something like that. So we need to be well below 2.0 degrees Celsius in order to protect island nations, especially who are vulnerable to sea level rise. And unless we step up, that's not going to happen. So we went into the, um, into the uh, Bula zone. No, I'm sorry, the bond zone I was in, right? No, I was in the Bula zone when we had this cup. Yes, it was in the Bula zone, which was the part where the conference center where all the negotiators were standing. And we held up our banner and we did a little um, little interactive uh, nonviolent uh, direct action where we had um, different people holding banners that said um, topics that countries could step up on. And we had someone step up and talk about why it was important to, for countries to step up on women and gender, why it was important for them to step up on, you know, the adaptation fund, why it was important for them to step up on transparency and all these different issues that we discuss at COP and how we can work together and benefit as a global community because of it. Okay, thanks. So that's a different type of action as well, where it's interactive, it's fun, you come play a game. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do this. At the end of the day, the whole idea behind NVDA is to make sure that whatever you're talking about, the message that you are talking about is published. It's everywhere. People see it, people hear it, 
people talk about it, it's a nice story that you hear and makes you committed towards it. Uh, things like this as well. Um, yeah, these are just some of the amazing things and banners and posters that people um, were making. This was painted, it's really big by the way, this is like 10 feet, this whole thing. Uh, it's about six foot, this turtle, like the length of a person. And um, this was painted, drawn, and painted in the same night. It was crazy. A bunch of random people showed up, just started painting, and it was awesome. Art space stuff was cool. Um, so this is the, sh the theater that I was mentioning. We did street theater. We did it during the march, and we also did it during this women's action. Um, so this is the corporate guy walking with corporate people. Uh, and we had like a fight going on. I chop off his head and all of that. And um, it got people talking. We also would go up to people and then we'd like start talking. So like, the corporate guy would go up to like people in business suits like that and ask them like, hey, would you like to buy in more fossil fuels? We can sink some more islands or we can do this and that. So you like this really styles and different ways of doing violent direct. It's just about how creative you can be and how well you execute it. Because if you execute it well, people will talk about it, people will be sharing it and all sorts. Um, yeah, this one maybe I won't share, it's a bit long because I want to go into the game. Um, so, all right, that is the end of that part. We're going to play a little game and we'll have a little debrief after the game and then we'll wrap up. Um, so, okay, uh, this game, a few of y'all have played it before. Uh, Sally, Pradeep and all of them, you guys, you know what to do. So you're going to be awesome for me. Uh, don't worry if you've not played it before. It's perfectly fine. But first things first, I need to group you guys into teams. Okay? So we have... Oh, let's see. We have, besides myself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sarah, are you on? Yes. I'm one of the Yango yeah. IYCMs. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put you guys in teams of two. So I need to ask this question because it's very important. Does everyone have a stable connection? And can everyone hear me properly? Because I'll be giving you yes, yes. It's very important. So if anyone can't hear me properly, can you just type in the chat box? You can't hear me properly? Okay. Ayesh is also going to join so that we can have eight. Um, you are eight, I think, but it's okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to teach you guys something or show you guys if you don't already know this. Um, if you look at the chat box over here, you see I'm showing you guys here. The chat box, you can click and select the people you want to talk to. Okay? All right. Is everyone clear on that? Because this is very important. You need to be um, during this exercise, you need to be talking to your teammate. You need to be talking to other teams. Okay? So, is everyone clear on how to do this? Send a personal message. See, when I choose Pradeep, for example, or Shreya from Nepal, it says privately. Okay? Is everyone clear on that? Uh, we can't see the chat box that you're pointing at, but does anyone have um, Wait, trouble with that? The, oh, there we go. The chat box. I'm pointing yeah, I can at see it. it. Okay. Okay. Here, there we go. You can choose the person or you can go to everyone. Do make sure you switch back to everyone when I tell you to. Okay? Pradeep, you're having a problem to hear us. Okay. Um... Pradeep, I'll put you on a team with Sarah, okay? You guys can chat, so it'll be okay. You guys both have... Uh... <laughs> you all both have um, experience playing this game, so you should be a bit better at understanding how it works, hopefully. 
Maybe, I don't know. Um, so, okay. Do you want me to randomly assign you guys to teams? I think I will do that. Does can everyone, is everyone up to playing this game? It's going to take 20 to 25 minutes. I put to ask that. For me, it's not possible. I'm a Britta here. For me, it's not possible. I can only uh, watch a bit. Okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. No worries. So, Britta can't... Uh, all right, so then I think we have enough people. Okay, so I'm going to put Kelvin together with Leia in Team A. In Team B, I'll be putting... Okay, Pradeep goes with... Uh, okay, I'll be putting Raihan and Sally in Team 2. Okay. Oh, we don't have enough people for more team. Okay, so I'll be putting Pradeep as the corporation people. Pradeep, your team C, and Sarah, you'll be team N. Okay? Is everyone clear on their teams? There. Oh, Sally is straight away. I want to be the mine company. Oh, relax, Sally. Calm down. Okay, so here's how the game is going to go. I need you guys to unmute yourselves and talk to each other if you can. Um, I'm sorry, you can't talk to each other. Please mute yourselves and don't, don't, don't like, use the chat box. Sorry, I'm a bit confused at the moment. Use the chat box to chat with each other, but you will have a chance to um, interact with me. So what are we going to do? It's going to be a really fun session. Okay, guys? Bear with me. It's... All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a game. All right? Team, there are four teams, and at the end, there's going to be a winning team. All right? So... Let us begin. <clears throat> so this is a little role play exercise. There are four teams compromising of four people. Team A is village A. Team B, village B. Team C is an evil corporation. And team N is the NGOs. Okay? So this is the scenario. Okay, there is a wonderful river, okay, that flows out into the sea, all right? There's a beautiful forest that separates village B, which is upstream, okay, they're on top here a bit, upstream, and then village A, which is downstream near the coast, okay? And then there's a beautiful forest, all right? Everyone clear on the scenario? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, what happens is, village A depends on the river and the sea for their livelihood, and they also go into the forest to forage for things. Village B depends on the river, the forest, and a whole bunch of other things, okay? Here is the scenario. A corporation, oops, there's a chat coming in. I, I haven't said the role yet. One second. One second, Sally. Okay. Um, so, here's the scenario. A corporation is coming in and is going to destroy... Okay, where's the draw? It's going to destroy the forest. Okay. This corporation is going to build a factory here. Okay, that processes um, different types of minerals. Okay, so this corporation is building a factory here in this forest. They've sent in a proposal and they've got accepted. Okay, the city, the government had said okay to doing this and they're going to cut down this forest at 
12 p.m. tomorrow. Okay? So, here's what's going to happen. If this factory is built here, it will pollute the river and a lot of people from village A will lose their livelihood. A lot of people from village B will also lose some of their things. Okay? So, right now, okay, oops, why is there annotation there? Get rid of that. Okay? So, now what is going to happen is, you guys are each a different group, okay? And today, right now, pretend, let's pretend, okay, that it is 12 p.m. At 12 p.m., the corporation, together with the government, have announced that they are going to cut down this forest tomorrow, okay, they're going to cut down this forest tomorrow at 12 p.m. Now, I will give each of y'all five minutes intervals, okay? We will pretend five minutes is four hours, okay? Is everyone clear so far? Tell, please tell me if I've, if, you, if I've lost you. Okay, I'm going to take silence as well, okay? So every five minutes means four hours and you have to make a decision, okay? Use the chat box. Okay, to message your pri your partner privately. Okay, is everyone clear on who their partners are? Uh, Shreya has a question. It seems like. Yes, Shreya. Okay, what are we going to do? So, what you are going to do is, you guys need to decide what are you going to do against the corporation and for this situation. So, the situation is that. This is going to be destroyed, okay? Tomorrow at 12 p.m. You now have four hours to make a decision on what you will do. And I don't mean like, oh, you are going to go and call the police or you're going to make a police report or you're going to do this and that. Tell me what you're going to do and what happens next. Like, if you're making a police report, that takes a long time to settle. If you're going to go to court against them or things like this, that is going to take a long time. You have only 12 hours, okay? 12 hours until the final verdict, okay? Is everyone clear? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to be giving you guys five minutes until the first session. Okay, at the end of the first five minutes, I want you guys to type to me here, send a message to me directly. Okay, Amalin, what your action is going to be. If you're going to, um, I don't know, call the police, is the corporate, you're going to buy someone over or if the NGOs are going to go and consult the witch doctor, send it to me, okay? Five minutes, that's all I give you. At the end of five minutes, if you don't send me something, I will consider it not accepted. Okay? Is everyone clear? Is everyone ready? Woohoo! Okay, so the press release has just been held at 12 p.m. Now it's 12 p.m. We're going to pretend I will give you guys. I've got a stopwatch here. Don't worry, I have a stopwatch that says five minutes starting from now. So you all can discuss and chat with each other. And also, do not forget that you can talk to other people. If Village A wants to talk to Village B, if the corporations want to talk to Village A or B, whatever you want. Sally, you guys are Village B. You and Raihan are Village B. So you guys are upstream. You guys still are okay or fine. Even if they build something here, you're upstream. 
Okay, so you can negotiate with other people. You can negotiate what you want to do. You want to save the forest. You want to work for the corporation. You want to poison the river. I don't know what you want to do, but you can do whatever you want. Are you poor or rich? Um, neither. At this point, you're not poor, you're not rich. But at, if they do build something, I don't know. The corporation people have to say something, you know. They have to offer you jobs or something. I don't know. But yeah, the teams. Pradeep and Sarah. Do you have anything? Sarah? Yeah? Amelan. Yes? Sorry, I just like, my network was so bad then. I just reconnected. I think Sarah will say this time. And... Yeah, so um, I'm the NGO. So if anyone wants to contact me, we can be, um, okay. we can serve as like a connection point or kind of a mediator between the villages mm -hmm. and the corporations. But we kind of know who's in the wrong here. So I think we know we have to take action. We can't let them do this. Sarah, you might want to message them privately, you know, some people might not want to And Pradeep, you're the bad guy. You're the evil corporation, Pradeep. To be evil. Don't be a good guy, corporation, Pradeep. Be evil. Suddenly got so quiet. Everyone got a plan and everything yet? Corporations, are you bribing? Okay, I need your actions or your decisions of what have you decided to do. You have one and a half minutes left. Raihad and Sally. So, this is Raihad, this is Sally. You guys better be talking. Best privately. Okay, good, good. Pradeep, you're the corporate company, Pradeep. When you have your answer or your decision, please put a D before it. Sarah, is this your answer? Yeah, uh, the first part is mine up to where it says forest. And the second part is Shreya's that she sent me. OK. 
Okay, NGOs, so to do that. So Shreya is from village A. You guys are the ones who are going to be most affected. So they are working with the NGOs. Yes, Pradeep, you've got to destroy the forest. Okay, time's up. I need an answer from Village B and the corporates. What are you going to do? You will yeah, help yeah, I... people for the welfare of society. Okay. So Village B, are you guys not doing anything? Okay, for now... I, okay, it's closed. So village B, you've got no response? Nothing? Sign a petition calling a protection of the forest. Okay. All right. Okay, so at 4 p.m., just four hours after the press release, Village A and the NGOs are working together. They, are, they have begun to write a petition to share with the coalition partners calling for protection of the forest. Um, who do you mean by coalition partners, my friend? The other villages and uh, impacted parties. Okay, so you guys have started a coalition between and village B. Is that right, village A? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Village A is working with the NGOs. They are leading the discussion. Good job, village A. You know. Thank you. Uh, good impact, yes. We need your help connected with them in the short time, all right? And village B is helping by signing a petition. So village B, you're working together with everyone? Yes, yes. All right. Corporate, I need you to be more clear. I will help the village people for the welfare of their society. How will you help them? Ready? How will you help these people? So, okay, Pradeep needs to be a bit more clear on that. And, uh, like, are you offering them jobs or things like this? Did Village A and B accept your job offer? How much money, insurance are you giving them any of that? Um, at the same time, okay, it is 4 p.m. Yeah. Something yeah, I'm, has I'm, like, Okay, I'm, that one, giving, Brady, you clear that later, you clear it up later in your next statement. Okay. Okay? Okay, okay. So at 4 yeah, okay. p.m., something happened, guys. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. At 4 p.m., the village leaders of A and the village leaders of B suddenly went missing. They have disappeared. Village A and B, the leaders have disappeared. Okay? I'm now going to give you four hours, aka five minutes. To discuss. You need to continue on because at 4 p.m., as of 4 p.m., the forest will still be destroyed. Okay? You need to step up your actions. Okay? You guys have five minutes from now. I don't know, Sarah. Where did they go? If anyone wants to unmute themselves and start talking, please feel free to do so. Like, for example, if you need a meeting discussion with uh, the corporation, or you need a corporation, you need to meet with everybody or something, 
you can have discussions between the groups, you know, just in the chat or you can chat as well. No, no, you don't remain silent. It's just your leader has gone missing. You are not just the leader. You are the whole village. Pretend that you are a village. You are not one person. You are a village. Really hope there's a discussion going on. Be more clear on what you mean by raise the campaign. What campaign? Are you going to have a search party? Are you going to like send out just one person to search for your leaders? Or are you going to like what what are you going to do be more clear about this we raise the campaign what do you mean by that what campaign you have three minutes left guys Village B and NGOs, are y'all also doing the same campaign together? But what's the campaign, Kelvin? NGOs, you got to step up your game. Okay, so you're running a campaign. Yes, Pradeep, you're the corporate one. Define what you mean by help, Pradeep. So how are you going to raise your voices to the world? Are you going to call the media? Are you having a press conference? Please elaborate, friend. You have one minute left. All right, everyone, can I get all your answers in it's the last 30 seconds? Ready, everyone? Okay, so Pradeep from the corporate, get jobs for everybody.
Chris. And oh, stepping it up. Can you be a bit more clear on what do you mean by strengthen the coalition? We're still in discussion of how our coalition will attack um, and work uh, t to stop the corporate activity in the forest, but we have not reached agreement. Okay. Village B, need to hear from you guys. Okay, that's a nicer way to put things. Okay, uh, Sally or Raihan, could I get an answer from Village B? If not, I'm going to continue. All right, so Raihan from Village B, Raihan and Sally are organizing a search party to look for both their leaders. Okay. Um, all right, so as of 8 p.m., uh, Village A has started the campaign. They were discussing before, and now they are starting the campaign with Village B and the NGO to stop the factory and bring back the leaders, okay? So they don't want the factories to be built. They don't want the forest to be cut down. And protests the police and other security institutions. It's just the police, my friend. Uh, so private security institutions usually don't care. Um, unless you, like, consider Greenpeace. But, yeah. Um, and you use media to spread the news, okay? Social media, I'm going to assume that's what you mean. Uh, so, when you mean by media, you send articles and things like that. That's what I'm going to assume. Uh, press release is a whole different story. Um, Village B, organizing the search party to look for their leaders. Good efforts, Village B. Corporate, they're going to offer everyone jobs. So that's a good incentive, right? Security, job security. They're going to build infrastructure like roads for everyone. Wish I'm liking this corporate, lah. a lot of jobs for everyone. Village A and B, you sure you don't want to jump on the corporate ship? Corporate, you should talk to them. NGOs, they have decided that they will send one of their NGO members, the Earth Guardians, Swish, I love that, into the forest to search for the leaders. At the very least, while they are still in the forest, they cannot cut it down. So that's a good thing. They have basically told the people that there are people in the forest, so you can't cut down a forest if there's someone inside. Uh, what they normally do is they will clear the forest of anyone and then they will start chopping it down. Um, they're working with villagers to strengthen the coalition to protect the forest. Okay, good job. Okay. As of 8 p.m., uh, because there are people in the forest, uh, unknown location in the forest, the construction and all of cutting down the forest can still go on at 12 p.m. Uh, because there will be a check before 12 p.m. All right, at 8 o'clock, the next situation that has happened. Ding, ding, ding. At 8 o'clock. <laughs> oh, Pradeep wants to say he has nothing connected with the missing of the leader. Are you sure, Pradeep? That sounds very suspicious now, you know? Okay, at 8 o'clock, okay? At 8 o'clock, there is sudden pollution in the river. The river has suddenly turned purple in color. Okay, Raihan, you are now village B for a while. Sally's got to go away for a while. Okay. 
Um, but as I said, at 8 p.m., the river turns purple, okay? All the fish are dead in this river, okay? You have five minutes to discuss. Go ahead. Remember, at 8 p.m., your village, A, B, whatever, the whole river has turned purple and all the fishes are dead. If you have your answers of what you're going to do, please discuss with all the people. Make sure you come to agreement before you post something. Like if you're going to have a campaign with Village B and the NGO, make sure you discuss with Village B and the NGO what sort of campaign you're going to have. Awfully quiet, guys. Okay, wait, it should be quiet. You guys should be typing. If you guys are going to do any actions together, make sure you discuss together what sort of action you're going to do and how you're going to do it. You have three minutes left. No, 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 no. One minute left, I should be getting all your answers now said to me, please. <clears throat> Corporate, NGOs, Village A, Village B, any, your decisions, five minutes are up. Timer, five minutes are up. Guys. Okay. 
So, wow, very interesting developments have happened at 12 o'clock at night. Village A and B. Okay. Interesting move, Sarah. With the NGO coalition. All right. Village A and B, do you have nothing to say? Right hand? Kelvin, Shreya. Okay. Okay. Wow. Very bold. Very nice actions. I love this. Yes. Village A. And you're gonna need your answer. If not, I'm gonna just move along. Okay, we're moving forward. So at 12 a.m., okay, before we move along, sorry, I forgot to mention a few things. So the search party and everything is still going on, yeah. Um, you all made one request was, you all made a police report. So police reports for missing people in pretty much most countries uh, is only started after the person has been missing between 12 to 24 hours. Uh, unless you're very certain and have that someone has abducted them uh, through evidence. Um, so you all didn't mention that here, so that we're going to assume that we'll only search for them after 24 hours. So the police are not doing anything. However, your police report against the factory has been denied uh, because this is an official thing. The corporation has already gotten permission to do this. They were holding the press release to announce that they are going to do it. So police have rejected that police report. Okay. Um, at 12 o'clock at night, um, the corporation doing an amazing thing. They are giving funding to clean the river to the NGOs. So NGOs, are you guys happy about that? No, they still won't tell us who polluted the river. Okay. And they denied funding our Save the Forest campaign for some reason. Okay. There's some backroom actions going on. Interesting. So at 12 o'clock at night, the coalition of NGOs decided to host a press conference to alert the government on the health concerns of the river, um, declaring a state of emergency for the river pollution. They are also protesting the corporations cutting down of the forest, making the declaration of H HTE ecosystem services that the forest provides to the country in terms of economic development. HTE, Sarah, what, what do you mean? Oh, T, the... the yeah. okay, sorry. Um, village B, and I'm assuming Village A, has joined in the conference. And Village B, very boldly, awesomely so, because they're upstream as well and affected, they have decided to say that the corporation caused the pollution and they are holding a protest against the corporation. Good jobs. Okay. So proud. Um, and yeah, that's at 12 a.m. Okay, guys? All right, at 12 a.m., something happened. All right? At 12 a.m., Quite a lot happened actually. The first thing that happened is the village leaders got drunk. They were not in the forest at all. They were in village A somewhere drinking and they got drunk. What, who would know? Like, I mean, you know, village leaders, terrible, hi, so irresponsible sometimes. All right, so they were found in village A in a random hut somewhere having a drink together very responsible people at 12 a.m they were found 
okay? At 12 a.m., okay, something else happened. Big trucks and wood-cutting stuff arrived at the corner of the forest, okay? All the big machines to cut down the forest arrived at the forest at 12 a.m., okay? At the same time, the water that turned purple, it's not purple anymore, guys. It's, it's fine, but the fish are still dead, though. The water has gone back to being fine. Okay? Huh? Three things Lain. happen. Three things Lain happen. Chotara, yeah, why you want to make that over us? Uh, what? Wife, I'm more at a meeting or a Zoom, okay? Okay, I don't understand that, but uh, we're gonna continue. Press. Uh, Press. Three people. Please mute your. Okay, um, we're gonna continue. Three things happened at 12 o'clock. The village leaders were found. Okay, in a pub, they were drinking. That's why they went missing. The trucks arrived at the edge of the forest. And the purple river went back to being normal color. It's fine now. Okay? Something miraculously happened. All right? So I'm going to give you guys now another five minutes until it's 4 a.m. Okay, you guys have, as of 12 a.m., the construction of the factory and the destruction of the forest is going to happen. Wait, Amalyn? Yes? Did the government approve our declaration of a state of emergency? Uh, it's 12 o'clock. No one from the government attended your press conference. Oh. I was gonna say that in the next session, but yeah. Okay. Just just checking. Thanks. Not not happening. Kelvin, are you clear? Is there something you're not clear about? I'm clear, sir. All right. Yeah. Hey, okay, you've got five minutes, yeah? I'm <laughs> 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 No worries. Uh, Game five. Text from my other phone.
So Raihan, you join with Prayash here. Yeah? Prayash has played this before, so he knows a bit. Uh, so just like bring up to speed. You have two minutes left. Please uh, send me your answers. What is the progress? What do you mean, Pradeep? One more minute left. So the progress is that at 12 a.m., all those things happened, the three things I mentioned just now, and we are at this stage. So these are the things that you all did just now. All right, five minutes are up. Can I get everybody's responses? What will you guys be doing? Okay, awesome. So the coalition, uh, Emmanuel, we'll get to that in a while. Um, just gonna fit, wrap this game up. So something's wrong with the machines. Interesting. Okay, Pradeep, taking the big boy stakes. Okay. Uh, village A and B, do you have anything to say? Oh. Oh, village B, beautiful. Village A, Kelvin. Shreya, you guys are still on, yeah? Guys, girls, people. Village A, is there anyone there? Oh, uh, Amalyn, I think you put my the message from Village A in mind. So the, we are convinced the corporations to cause of pollution hold a protest against them, I think uh, is theirs. Oh, okay. Oops. And we, um, the coalition has also joined forces with the human chain. Okay. Um, Prayash, the cooperatives were offering jobs to villages and they were going to build roads and stuff. Um, but now, 
Dang, dang, dang. I love what is happening at 4 o'clock in the morning. You guys have so much energy at 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, they have decided to stop the corporate by sabotaging the machine. Village team is so gung-ho. I love that. Okay. Um, and they have formed a human chain around the forest to make sure the forest is untouched. <laughs> and the coalition Red Panda <laughs> has joined the human chain and uh, thinks that something has happened to the machines but doesn't know who did it. So they have issued a statement saying that the machines are broken but they don't know what happened. Interesting. Um, Village A is convinced the corporation is the cause of the pollution and hold a protest against them. Oh, protest against the corporation at the same time. Okay. Awesome. So at four o'clock, that is what has happened. Okay. So the, that is what happened at four o'clock. Let me just say at four o'clock, as of four o'clock, doesn't look like they can cut down the forest, does it? They've got a human chain and everything. What's going on? What? Okay. This is your last action at 8 a.m., okay? So, at 4 o'clock in the morning, okay, something has happened as well. Okay, after you guys have formed your human chain, after the machines have stopped working, <laughs> After all of this has happened, at 4 o'clock in the morning, maybe about a little later, like 5 o'clock, the police arrive and all the riot police in all of those FRU as we call them here, they have arrived, okay? They have issued to the people who are in the human chain to get out of the human chain peacefully before they have to use force, okay? There are a lot of riot police. That happened at four o'clock in the morning. You have one last action, one last round of five minutes to determine whether at 12 o'clock they cut down the forest or not. Okay, is everyone clear? This is the time when you all need to talk with each other to the different groups. Corporate, what's going to happen, corporate? You have five minutes starting now. Go. Wow, someone's typing really furiously. <laughs> Who called the cops on you guys? Um, I don't know. It kind of happens when you form a human chain and have to protest and accuse people of pollution and stuff like that. You guys did a lot, you know. Sending a negotiator to talk with Coalition Red Panda to talk with Popo. Okay. They did a lot of stuff. You know. What are you going to negotiate with the police? Please let us know what the coalition is going to negotiate with the police. Reaffirm that your peace and love. What is peace and love, Sarah? Tell us more. Nonviolence. Okay, but what are your demands? You guys have formed a human chain around the forest. You guys need to have demands, guys. Huge human chain at 4 a.m. We were waiting for the government to show up and, and listen to us. Does the police count as the government? Are they listening? They're listening and the police are there, so they kind of said... They're not happy about it, friend. OK, 
Okay, so how are you going to raise your voice, Fresh? You guys are already in a human chain. What else are you going to do there? Are you going to hold the press release? Are you going to do... Okay. Interesting. Village A has a very interesting plan. Is this what Village B is deciding? You have, oops, you have two minutes left to discuss some more. Oh, NGOs. So cute. We're almost done in a while. I can't read this, uh, but I'll, I'll recap in a while for, for once we finish this little exercise. One minute left. I need an answer, people. I need things you guys are going to do. What's happening? NGO, your demands, you don't have any demands. Your human chain people, do you have any demands? What is your demand for your human chain? Do you want the corporation to go away? Do you want the forest to be saved? What do you want, people? Okay, I need an answer from the corporation, village B, A, you guys are satisfied with that? Wow, Pradeep. Okay, you guys are also going to do that. That's good. Good to document. Okay, press briefing as well. All right, okay, answers. That's all the answers I'm taking. Now let's go through all the things that have happened. Okay, I'm gonna just close all of this. All right. So, oops. Final actions at 8 a.m. in the morning, okay? Okay, Sarah, thank you. With the eyes on you guys, you guys get that. At 8 a.m., okay, you guys sent a negotiator from the Red Panda Coalition to talk with the police. You are reaffirming that you're peace and love, and when the government is ready, you're holding your press, really, uh, you're holding a press briefing, dropping the state of emergency because the river is clean, but refusing to re leave the forest until the permit for cutting it is revoked. Okay, you guys are taking a big stand. The corporations, they said they got nothing to say, man. They try to help you out. They give you jobs, all these things they're going to do for you. And you're still doing this. So they don't understand and they'll call help from security and also from government. Okay. Village A and B seems to be united that you guys are standing your ground. You're going to document the whole event and demand for the forest to be untouched, letting the the spread of the voice and villages be raised, um, raising morale, that's good. Uh, and send some people to negotiate with the corporation to buy time with other people. Must go to court to stop the factory. Okay, so at 8 a.m. you can go to court. Um, but that isn't going to save much time, okay, because it's already been officiated. Uh, you send a negotiator from Coalition Red Panda to talk with the police. Police are there just to do their jobs. They're here to make things go through. Okay. So what is the final verdict? All right. At 12 p.m., what is the final verdict? The 
final verdict is do you want to find out does anyone want to find out Hello? yes yes i can't read this but yes the corporation wins they tear down the forest the forest is no more they cut it down wait let me take some this no more forest they cut it down what do they do the police usher all the people away from the forest they do a clearing of the forest to make sure there's no one there and they cut down the forest and build a factory but at the end of the day pradeep still i mean the corporation still offers jobs to village a and b their roads that are being built and all these things happen anyway yes there is a way to win at the end actually um but let's talk about that okay uh let's talk about the things that you guys did so this time um if you want i want if everyone could just talk we'll just do this for about 20 minutes and then we'll be done okay um so why is the final verdict the destruction of the forest can anyone answer me that anyone okay um let me yeah okay money yes uh but the whole issue is that yes you will not give up on the matter but because like i said from the start this was um a press conference to announce that they are going to cut down the forest that means they've already gotten permission from the government that means they are already legal that means all these things that you are doing are illegal like i mentioned earlier remember what i talked about whether it's legal or illegal because some of these things are dependent on that and yes prash um mentioning about the villagers being worried about their livelihood and having a job security and things like this at the end of the day these things win out no matter what um the corporate did try to buy you guys over um a few times uh he wanted to help you guys with the welfare of your society give you jobs for you guys good guy corporate okay um but you guys didn't pay attention to that that is good that is normally what happens in situations uh where it's indigenous people or things like that um but where people have been staying there for thousands of years but most of the time they ignore you because you didn't protest when they were having this discussion about this project in a conference hall in the middle of the town somewhere and you don't have access to going to those places and objecting to these things yes with aircon of course and these kind of things you can't always be involved directly and because not everyone stands up these things go through and when these things go through it's too late for us sometimes to do anything but yes there are actions that we can take for example um you guys sabotage village b where was it just now um oops too far up village b over here you guys brilliant you sabotage the machines but the thing is you guys sabotage the machines at 4 o'clock in the morning that's really early there's a lot of time for them to call more machines to come in and things like this good move good maneuver but it's a bit too early at the same time this is also something you guys did you guys formed the human chain at 4 o'clock in the morning by the time you all reach 12 pm people are going to be tired and not so alert and not full of energy and these are the things that um the police take advantage of and they try to split you up and when they split you up they hurt you up and it's easier to handle you when you're one person and not with a big group of people so um yeah but good tactics and good things that you are, you are, you guys were thinking of um but at the end of the day when you do a campaign or you want to do an action or you want to do a campaign like this you really need to think it through on how you you handle this whole process you need to think about how it works out whether you are working with the government whether you're working with the ngos only or whether you're talking to someone who doesn't need to be talked to for example okay um you guys were talking to the corporate to buy some time 
the corporate is not going to care about your village. They already done this. They've already planned this. Like Pradeep said, they have nothing to say to the people. And sending someone to talk to them is not, uh, it's not productive. And remember how earlier I mentioned um, at 4 uh, at four p.m., your village, village leaders went missing, okay? And then they came back drunk and then y'all wasted time. Y'all sent in effort. Y'all sent in effort to have a search party to look for both your, your leaders. Okay, this is very important. It's good that you did it. It's a responsible thing to do. But at the same time, this is what corporations do in the real world. Um, this is what big media, this is what politics, they play politics like this all the time. They have something going on and then they play a whole different story so that you have an att uh, attention to, towards something else. These village leaders, for all we know, were bought over by the corporation. They paid for them to have a good night out, paid for them to have beer all night and things like this or whatnot. And these are tactics that, believe it or not, actually happen in real life. People get murdered. People are abducted in their sleep. People are put on like no-fly lists. Um, you can be put on lists where if you go into certain countries, they are aware that this is someone who is a chaotic person or things like this. Um, and these are just scare tactics that they use uh, to keep you down so that you don't stand up and fight for what you believe in. And it's very important, not just for environmental activism, but for all forms of activism. And um, also politics, you know, see the world properly, all that jazz. Um, but yeah, so at the end of the day, what was your objective? Where were you guys heading? And um, like, what was your direction? There wasn't a very clear narrative. That's why I tried to say that it's very important to talk between the different people, especially between the NGOs, Village A and Village B, because you guys are the frontline communities. It's very good that you guys had press releases and things like this, which because that's how you attract the media. And when you want to have a press release, I know it is a short time to give you guys to talk about all of this, but it's very important to have a message. It's very important to have something clear you're talking about, something that um, has a story. Because, um, how do I say this? A lot of great campaigns and a lot of great actions, when you tell another person, the way this, this, the campaign spreads or the knowledge about what's going on spreads, is when you talk about it, when you, um, how do I say this? When you tell the story to another person and then when this person hears about this story, if this person tells it to another person, you're sharing the information forward. If this person doesn't share it forward, it's okay, but this person has the message stuck at the back of their head. Uh, this person thinks about it the next time. So, yeah. And... Um, that's all I have about the game for now, for the debrief. I want to share with you a little story. I kind of don't have the pictures on me right now. I'm going to see if I can get on Facebook to find it. But does anyone have any questions for me? Anyone? About the game, how we played it? Hello? Guys, friends, okay, I guess I'll take that silence as a no. Um, I'm going to share with you guys a little story of uh, an action that we did, which made it all the way, oh, wait, I found the right person. Um, that we did and uh, through this campaign we were very very successful in what we did um, I know it's damn random going through some person's Facebook pictures but he posts all of the blockade stuff okay so what happened was there was a uh, Oops. What happened was um, 
in a big forest reserve in Malaysia, in the northern part of Malaysia. Um, there was a huge logging situation going on. Okay. So this covered this whole area here. Okay. This whole area. All right. There was massive deforestation going on. There's small scale deforestation going on in these three places as well, um, where there was dams being built. Okay. But here in this area, there was a lot of deforestation going on and it was destroying indigenous lands. There are people who actually live in the forest in these places. They are the indigenous people of Malaysia. And, um, oh, what? Yeah, so find out this story is going to sh be show you what this action can make a change. Um, yeah, so this deforestation is going on for a long time. So for one year, um, this is happening. And the people in the villages in the forest here, there was about three main big villages that were being disrupted by this. Their ancient burial grounds were being destroyed. Um, the places where they would normally collect things from the forest, uh, like rattan to make furniture or for things in their daily life or like for farming things or like rubber, they have their own rubber plantations in the forest, which they do very ingeniously. That's a whole different topic. Um, but they basically tolerated this for one year. And during this one year span of time, the, corp the, the corporations that were logging these places, the loggers, they were bribing them. They tried to build systems for them, give them cars and all sorts of things. But they said no, they didn't want to have any of it. So what they did instead was they did research. They showed evidence they took pictures they even went to court documented all these things sent request letters saying don't do this anymore we don't want this logging in our forest send them to the state government to the federal government and all these things for one year and nothing happened and then about one year ago they set up a blockade okay and this blockade was made out of wood and everything uh i think i've got a so this is the area the land area that was um, destroyed, this is really, really high up. Like the size of a person is like a, like the size, le like smaller than the mouse. That's really, it's like a car can drive through these hill, these little treacherous here. This is a huge area of land. Um, I can't really remember how many square feet, but like really big, okay. Um, and this has already been happening. And uh, what happened was we set up blockades. So in these blockades, um, we had huts and villages like this. We built huts and things because the blockade was not for one day. It wasn't for two days. It was for um, months. Like they were there for three, four months. They even destroyed the blockade a few times. Um, oops, wrong one. Um, I think I've got a better picture of the blockade here. Yeah, so these were the huts that we built and things like that. And um, this is one of the town hall places which we had our discussions about what we we're going to do every day. And uh, we had banners, we had all the things that we wanted. We had a whole bunch more. Um, I didn't have them all here. I think he has some more. Yeah, this one is sort of stop the dam that was also being built. They joined in with us in our coalition. Um, this is also a dam group that joined in with us. So you see like a lot of other groups which are also involved with the forest deforestation joined in together on a similar event. Um, and yeah, so they held a blockade. The police came and tore it down one time. The loggers tore it down one time. They arrested um, a whole bunch of us one time um, because, like I said, it's illegal for outside people to be there. Um, so two of my friends got arrested. They pretended that they were reporters and they actually, like, this happened a year ago and they're now still facing the court case stuff. It's been pushed and dragged a lot. Um, they weren't reporters, of course. I mean, we just use the name reporters because they're a bit more lenient on reporters. Um, but... We got arrested once, twice, uh, things like this happened. But the thing is, we didn't stop. We didn't give up. 
Um, we united under one NGO. So if any time we got arrested, we had one lawyer to take care of everything. And um, all these things happened over a span of four or five months. Um, we stopped the loggers after one week of having the dam, up, uh, the, the blockade up. Our blockade, after one week, we stopped the, lo the logging trucks from bringing the logs out. So the logs were stuck inside the forest and they couldn't be brought out so they they lost money they were losing money every day which is a good thing uh, you want to bankrupt them so they can't do more trade you know i mean it's a bad thing but it's a it's a tactic it's what people do uh, to when things are dire and you don't have any other choices um they did sabotage some of the machinery i will not say who did it or what did it or but machinery was sabotaged um, it was set on fire uh, and that was when there was a, uh, they tore down the blockade a second time. Um, but these were the th things and extreme measures that people were willing to do and wanted to do. And after three months, no, four months, um, the blockade was taken down peacefully because the case was brought to court. So there was a police case against the loggers from the indigenous people. And then there was a case from the loggers against the indigenous people um, for a whole bunch of things. Like they had a whole list which all got thrown out the window. It was just all rubbish. Like it was to buy time and stretch it out so that the we didn't have any more resources. You know, they kind that sort of thing. Um, these are tactics that people use. Um, but after three months in court, after that, uh, we won. The courts decided this in favor of the indigenous people. The land was awarded back to the indigenous people. All logging rights to that area were retracted and pulled back. And uh, it is a big step forward for us for any form of deforestation in Malaysia. And we followed the process. We did it throughout. We didn't just do one stage. We didn't just go into the forest and hold up like, like cover the forest with a blockade and just do nothing in there. No, we told the press, we told everyone about it. We had a lot of local traction in Malaysia and a lot of people donated food, uh, donated a lot of different items to us. And it was uh, quite an interesting uh, experience to go. But uh, just to wrap up, what happens when things like this go well? It's a very good precedence for future battles. If you want to do things in the future, campaigns like this to stop similar cases, there's nothing wrong with copying things and doing things that way. It's perfectly fine and it's totally fun. And um, at the same time, you get a lot of experience so you can ask people how they did it before and uh, that's also a good thing. And at the same time, this is a form of us doing many different actions under one big banner of campaign. We had a blockade, we had a march, I forgot to mention, we had a march in Kuala Lumpur uh, about this uh, together with other indigenous groups and other uh, campaigns as well. We've also done a lot of work towards it and that's how we succeeded. We had a dedicated lawyer uh, helping us and fighting for this in court constantly. We had a lot of lawmakers on our side, we had a lot of um, uh, local town council people helping us and that was what drove it forward and it's important that you understand that yes these corporations the government police and all they have a lot of power yes i will not deny that but the people we the people have a lot of power too and it's all about uniting and using these tools and these techniques or campaigns in a very beautiful way, in a very precise way, and you target the right people. Make sure your media, for example, about this blockade, we targeted the media of the people all around. You all talk about things going on outside of Malaysia, but what about inside Malaysia? So we use it in that perspective. Um, at the same time, we targeted the loggers by drying out their resources, things like this. We were specific with what actions we were doing. So it's very important to establish that for whatever actions you're doing. Don't think that, oh, you must go and set fire to all these machines and destroy. No, different situations call for different things. It's very different in different countries, different places. Um, some places, the police will come and help you out. They won't 
they, they'll come to the blockade and they will just stand there to protect you. Some countries get teared down. So it's different. So don't always think like, okay, we need to do it just like that. Understand your situation and act it out accordingly. Um, and yeah, that's my two hours. That's uh, my allotted time. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, we've got some in the chat, I think. Yes, together we can achieve a lot of things, guys. That's one way to start it, 2018. Um, maybe something for you guys to check out on YouTube. Uh, something really fun and interesting as well. A really fun, different way. They are called the Yes Men. They are really incredibly funny and awesome and they do actions like pranks on amazing people, like really high up people. It's quite fun. So do check that out. I hope you guys had fun in the game. I'm sorry if it was a bit dry. It's uh, very fun to have this game in person. So, well, hint, hint, Pradeep, you know, bring me to Nepal. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's all for me today. Thanks, Amelin. Before we all get off, I just want to wish everyone a very happy new year and remind you to, to sign you. up for webinars in January. Woohoo! I know. Same to you, Sarah. Happy new year. <laughs> I know Rahan has signed up for a webinar in February, which is awesome. And I can't wait to hear what he and his group have planned. But let's, uh, we, I, I know that you guys all want to know when the webinars are going to be more than two days out. And so that means you have to tell us when two days out, when your webinar is going to be and what time. So we're excited to hear what you guys have to share with us. You all have so much knowledge and experience in the great work you've been doing for different environmental causes. And so we want to hear about some of the solutions you've implemented, some strategies. Um, tell us about what you're, what you're up to and uh, share with uh, something that you think will be very relevant and replicable for other members of OIE. Okay. Happy New Year's everyone. I guess that's it. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye, Amaline. Bye. Bye.